next up we have Dr. Karine uh, Coutier, from, also from Paris, France, and uh, she's going to discuss the endocrine manifestations in ECD. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. First, I wanted to thank the ECD Global Alliance for inviting me to talk to you about the endocrine manifestations in ECD. So I'm an endocrinologist in Paris, in La Pitié-Salpêtrière. Uh, endocrinology consists on studying glands and hormones, and I try to keep this talk very simple so everybody can um, understand what the issues are. So the pituitary gland is a gland which is uh, localized in the brain and there are two parts, the anterior and posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary regulates other glands um, in the body and controls most of the hormonal secretions from thyroids, adrenals, we'll see that later, ovaries, testicles, uh, breast, and also uh, produces growth hormone. The posterior pituitary, uh, which is here, um, produces the antidiuretic hormone, and like the name says, this hormone, um, uh, well, a lack in this hormone induces enhanced diuresis, means that you urinate more, and then in, ter in turn it drives to an important thirst and a need to drink in order to maintain normal hydration. And this deficit uh, is called diabetes insipidus. The thyroid gland, which is uh, here in the neck, is a very important gland which secretes hormones that regulate many metabolic processes, including growth and energy expenditure. The adrenal glands are very small glands localized just above the kidneys, and they produce several major hormones important for coping with physical stress to body and maintaining adequate blood pressure, blood volume and cell retention. They're really vital hormones like cortisol and aldosterone which regulate blood pressure, cell retention and general well-being. The adrenal also secrete mildly potent male hormones which have a role in females and adrenaline and noradrenaline, the hormones of stress. The gonads which are the ovaries in women and testicle in men, uh, have two functions. The first one is the secretion of the sexual hormones, which are estradiol and progesterone in women and testosterone in men. And the other function is the production of gametes to ensure reproduction, oocytes in women and spermatozoids in men. So now that you know that, um, well, in Erdenchester disease, all the glands can be infiltrated by the histiocytosis. The pituitary, the testicles, uh, the adrenals, the thyroid, and also the breasts in women and also in men. And hormonal dysfunctions are very frequent and uh, have important implications because they create diabetes insipidus, fatigue, head rush, excess body weight, low muscular strength, impotency, infertility, depression, mood changes, an increase in cardiovascular risk, which is already increased in ECD, and bone demineralization. Um, so we studied the patients that we have in common with Julien Roche, and we have seen that um, the most frequent hormonal deficiency is the growth hormone deficiency. In children, uh, growth hormone deficiency prevents you from uh, reaching your target height, but in adults, it has also, also very important implications, which are not about growth, but about regulation of metabolism, bone metabolism, cardiovascular metabolism, lipids, glucose, um, and uh, also the repartition between mu muscular mass and fat mass. So it's a very important hormone also in adults. And you see that almost 80% of the patients have growth hormone deficiency in Erdheim-Chester disease. Testicular deficiency is very frequent in men. Half of the men have a real testicular deficiency. The diabetes insipidus um, is seen in about a third of the patients. 
gonadal function deficiency, the difference between testicular deficiency and gonadal function deficiency is that it comes from the pituitary. Here it's the testicle which is inf infiltrated, here it's the pituitary which is infiltrated, and then the gonads, so ovaries in women and testicle in men, uh, do not function. Thyroid deficiency is seen in about 20% uh, of the patients. Cortisol deficiency is pretty rare. And, well, an important thing is that almost nobody has no hormonal deficiency. You don't always have symptoms, but if you look for a hormonal deficiency in ECD, you'll probably find one, so it's very important. Um, Diabetes insipidus is often one of the first signs of ECD. It appears sometimes before all the other signs and uh, is pretty often the first endocrine manifestation. And once you have diabetes insipidus, usually it's permanent. New deficits can appear during follow-up, so it's very important to evaluate regularly because it's not because you don't have uh, many deficits uh, when you're checked that you won't develop other deficits later in your life. Men can have an alteration in sperm count, so if patients are young and might have a parental project, it's absolutely mandatory to um, to propose conservation of sperm for later because the testicle can be destroyed by uh, the osteocytosis. So this is to show you the frequency of the entire anterior pituitary deficits. So this is the proportion of patients. 91% of patients have at least one deficit in the anterior pituitary and um, only 8% have no anterior pituitary dysfunction. And 70% of the patients have at least two deficits. So these are the recommendations we wrote uh, after studying uh, this cohort of patients we follow in Pitié Salpêtrière. You have to, each year, um, evaluate the pituitary function clinically by uh, looking for signs of anterior pituitary deficits and looking for diabetes insipidus, so you, you measure 24 hours diuresis and water intake. And if it's superior to 3 liters, then it's abnormal. You can do a pituitary MRI to try to find uh, signs of infiltration in the anterior pituitary, but most of the time, uh, even if you have uh, pituitary deficits, you won't see uh, anything on, on the MRI. So a, a normal MRI doesn't mean you don't, you don't have deficits. I instead, when you have an infiltration that you can see on the MRI, you always have a deficit. And then we have a hormon oops, sorry, hormonal evaluation um, of the anterior and, pituitary, uh, anterior and posterior pituitary functions by hormonal tests. For the gonads, uh, it's particularly important in men to uh, look for um, nodules in the testicle and to always perform uh, testicular sonography. And in men with, uh, in, which, in whom you see an infiltration, you do sperm cryopreservation if there might be a parental project. And of course, you evaluate the gonadal function so dosage of estradiol, testosterone, and um, to evaluate the ovarian and testicular functions. For thyroid, you have to look for a goiter or no nodules, and then you'll perform a thyroid sonography if there are anomalies, because it's really um, less frequent than the other uh, deficits I talked to you about. And we always evaluate, because it's very easy, the thyroid function by hormonal tests. For the adrenals, so the adrenal um, deficits is very rare. You can look for clinical signs of uh, adrenal deficiency. Look on the uh, abdominal or adrenal CT scan if uh, there is um, an infiltration. But uh, you know when you have the infiltration around the kidney, you often have the infiltration around the, the adrenal, but that doesn't mean you're going to have an adrenal deficiency. We don't observe that. And you evaluate the adrenal function with hormonal tests. For the breast, you will search for lumps 
in women, of course, but also in men. We have male patients who have uh, lumps in their breasts, which can be either due to the gonadal, gonadal dysfunction or to a breast infiltration by the histiocytosis uh, directly. And then if you have an anomaly, you will perform mammography and uh, mammar, uh, sonography, mammary sonography. And the last thing is about metabolism, because there are many reasons why in ECD uh, the metabolic and cardiovascular risk is high. It's because of the ECD itself, because of the treatments, because of the hormonal deficits, because of the hormonal treatment also. And we have also seen that uh, patients with ECD are, have very frequently a high blood pressure almost half of the patients, and diabetes mellitus in almost 30% of the patients, so much more often than in the general population. So you have to regularly um, evaluate blood pressure, EKG, blood glucose, and lipid profile, because uh, these are very common features. Thank you very much for your attention.